pike edge. Oh, okay. I have a little bit left, okay. Got him, beautiful. Got him, beautiful. That was almost dead tenner. Okay. Yeah, got, got him. him. <laughs> I'm not sure where that was. I think it might be on top of the one that was there on the left hand top corner. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I'm not sure, I can't see, but I hit it. Oh, okay. I was yeah, holding right, right edge <laughs> then. Were you? Yeah. It's just the wind is coming and going. Just try it a little bit. No, no. Got him, beautiful. Oh, top right corner. Yeah, right there. It looks like where the. the yeah, right um, Today the I'm yeah. bringing to another little 22 rifle. Uh, which is one to put through our little PRS slash ELR shooting course. Um, and it's probably a little bit the opposite to the scale to the previous one we did, which was the CZ in the MDT chassis with the big night force yeah. scope and that right, sort yeah. of stuff. That one of the might would be the, the benchmark that, that we're going to work up to at the moment with all the mods and bits yeah. and pieces on it. Nice um, hit. This is probably the opposite end of the stat scale. Uh, it's still a brand new rifle, but this is the Savage Mark II um, in the, it's a, it's a wood stock, blued barrel, but it's in the very basic form. I'll go through a little bit more in, in a minute, but like I said, it's a little bit the other end of the scale. And what we're talking about there is when we mentioned this and spoke about what we're gonna do with the 22 sort of stuff, there's a few comments that have been, can you show the likes of the better, more budget orientated, cheaper ones you can buy, and the likes of the Savage is one of the one that was mentioned. So that's what I went in mind to, to get this, to try the other end of the scale, uh, but not just to, uh, focusing on a cheaper firearm, but also setting up in the cheaper form. Um, so to see how it actually perform and see what we could actually get done in that format. So this is what we've got. I'll put it up on a little stand so you can actually see it. Um, <laughs> it came as this rifle that you see here. Um, what I put on it um, is a set of rings, a scope, and I pulled off a couple of bits as well because I was going to use it and it is set up with a couple of little um, Picatinny rails which are set up to run a scope. It did also have the rear and forward sight set up on it. Now those really were just in the road type of thing that hooks up on the bag and that sort of stuff um, to, and not going to use them at all. They just mounted on a little dovetail both front and rear so I just knocked those out, used the little brass drift and knocked those two out. At the moment it's done in extreme budget form and everything about it. I'll go through that. But at the moment I've just simply put some tape over here to get rid of the little sharp barbs. So there's so that now goes in and out of bag without any problems. Um, and yes, you could fill it up or you could leave it exposed. There's all sorts of things you could do. But at the moment there's just a piece of tape over there. This one that's covered by the scope is still exposed. Um, everything else, I adjusted the trigger down to its minimum weight, but other than that stock. Um, and the whole rifle is as that. Um, what I've got sitting on top of it, a set of rings, uh, which this, this set of rings, uh, which I can't tell you what brand, they're non-branded, but they're the style of ring that has the little um, self-centering nylon bush inside them. Um, and this scope, which is a Nikko Sterling scope, which is a scope that I have had, it's a, a hunting scope, something that has got some adjustable turrets and things, but it's over 12 years old. So probably, or from what I've seen, you can't even buy it anymore, but it is really simply talking about a very budget orientated scope, something that's back down in the two or $300 um, is what this scope is. And what we are trying to put forward is that you can still do this. I'll go through the other details I did with it. There is a couple of bits that I did to, uh, apart from adjusting the trigger, I also made some slight modification to these rings. Um, what I was trying to do was get maximum elevation out of this scope. This is like the average one of this of, 
of um, the cheaper style, which is just at the level you call tactical with adjustable turrets. These are lockdown turrets that actually you lock them down, twist them. Um, and actually, when I used them, they worked quite uh, quite accurately. I haven't properly tested on a, on a um, scale or anything, but dialing up, as you'll see in this video coming up, I needed to dial up what my data shed should be 42 millimeters. I dialed up 42 millimeters as only a tiny bit high. I don't have much data. It could be the data. It could be the adjustment. But only two, um, oh, sorry, 42 mil, um, minutes of angle. I was only two minutes out to actually hit. So really good. Works really well. What I did do, but was actually shorten this front ring, uh, this front post here. I actually shortened that so I could get another 15 minutes of angle in this. So able to happen because of these self-centering bearings, but um, or these these inserts. But it meant that I could get my full adjustment out of this scope, which was 50 minutes, uh, which didn't fix my trying to shoot at 80 minutes probably, but it still made it so that it actually worked. So let's, I'm going to be confusing at the moment. I'll go back into the rest of it. Other than that, I, I lowered the, I got the trigger pressure down to the, the um, the pounds on the trigger down to just over two and a half pounds, so still works nicely like that. It's a Savage with a little center blade in it. Um, and the only other thing I got, it came with a 10 round magazine and I got another 10 round magazine. Um, as you can see, it came with this wood stock, which is actually quite nice, quite with a little cheek riser on it. This one was quite functional and worked quite well. Um, as for my assessment of the firearm, listen, accurate as, as in most things, as accurate as the scope was to use. Um, but and I think to be honest it was brand new when you're using it we probably had got to where we'd shot 300 rounds by the end of the day um, yeah probably about that about 300 rounds with what we did um, and it seemed to be getting a little bit more accurate the more we shot it but really very accurate worked very well even with the little light barrel still shooting nicely on that side of things um, the action uh, to be honest, it's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit square and a little bit rigid, but another thing that's just loosening up, it's brand new, as it loosened up, it's all just getting better and nicer and starting to work really nicely. There were some funny little actions in the trigger, occasionally we'd get a little bit of a, a click as you went to actually pull it, like it was actually sitting someplace, the sear was sticking a tiny bit, still operated, but all started to be settling down and really at two or like I said around 300 rounds it really got to where it was all operating really nicely. We put a bit of lube on it and the normal bits and pieces but um, magazines all functioned fitted you know form they're a little different the way they release on this. Um, normally used to a forward release uh, like most 22 magazines they prefer to have that right out but a little different in the way of using really two hands is the most comfortable way because the little release at the back of it but in all other forms, this was in, in form and function, um, worked really well, did exactly what it's supposed to do. As said, I really tried to set this up in a very cheap form. So really trying to stay to where it all still was functional and usable, uh, but at one of Good the lower go. end of budgets that you could actually pull it off at. Um, and in truth, it got there, it worked. Tall, over top, 12 o'clock, like one target tall. Oh really? Oh well, that was a pretty good dial then. It was. So back to 40 for a little cheap scope, but still dialed up about right. Mm. Oh, where are we going? See, okay. So it's 12 o'clock. Yep. So the wind was good, this elevation's a bit out of whack. Hit him! Just like that. <laughs> awesome. Top left corner. On target. Bottom right corner, just off. Dust. Breeze is up. Left, just off left. The breeze is up a bit more now. Yeah, okay. I've got to try and read the wind. Yeah, you got it. Hit! Pretty much dead centre. Okay, well still, that's four on target. Yep. 
That's not bad. Both That's myself. not bad at all. Um, I went through and did the whole course, went through and shot it and did that sort of stuff. And there was a little bit of the gun coming together and starting to get better, starting to settle down by I got to the end of it. Um, but it still functioned really well. Still got to the point where I it was able to use more challenged by the quality of the scope than by the accuracy of the rifle. It's a little bit of comfort which really changed how it shoots. Um, and it, listen, it was an unfair day to try it in. I think it would have performed a little better without the crazy, well, slightly crazy wind we have. And you'll see in there the wind flag was certainly getting pushed around and that side of things. But it still performed really well. I think I got four hits out at, at um, 250 yards when out there. Second shot um, to hit the plate. You could see the inconsistency after that, but worked nicely. We tried out at 500 yards um, is the next level went to. Tall and left. Two targets tall, five targets, sorry, five targets tall, two targets left. Okay. Okay, let's try. Oh, just off right edge of plate, two o'clock, just off right edge. Right, just slightly right. Uh, level the right edge, one and a quarter targets low. Right and low. Half target low, quarter of a target right. The day was a bit crazy, so tall, I put a bit of excuse to the day tall. and the conditions of the day. But the bigger issue to... was that I didn't have enough dial on this scope. Even though I went straight to the velocitor um, and I was I only have 50 minutes in this, so I was using 30 minutes of holdover in a reticle that's not designed for it on a bad day. Got close, as you'll see, but listen, it was really asking a little bit too much. Very happy with what it did pull off, but a 6-inch plate at 500 yards with all those conditions was a bit much for it to ask. And we could have carried on, but once we'd gone through and we did three magazines worth, and listen, we're not seeing the consistency. But then we came back down and went through all the targets, the close ones, with uh, standard velocity and Sam went through it as well, so I had a bit more of a plank and then Sam went through and did the stuff with the standard velocity. And you'll see it went really nicely for her as well. So listen, I think, uh, I suppose what I'm trying to put forward here is this is just a, the best budget um, in the way popular brands that we could find here in an easy form. So it was easy for us to find, it was very budget orientated. Um, and then that's what we've used with a, rather than we had this scope in the cupboard, so probably not quite fair on that side of things, but a very similar quality to what you can find. And probably you can find a little bit better quality for the same sort of money, but all about the same sort of place. But anyway, that's this little uh, Mark II Savage in the basic form. So we've got light barrel, this came with the sights, like I said, and that sort of stuff but it did come with this nice little wood stock, nice little cheek riser, already got the Picatinny rails, um, and performed very well for a, um, a very budget conscious rifle. Anyway guys, that's my little take on this one for the moment. Um, hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time.